call on the Lord, and he'll hear us. Amen. Jeremiah 33 and 3 said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. And God didn't stop there. He said, I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. We're serving a God who's able to do anything you need today, whatever you may need, whatever the, uh, 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 you've got in your body, maybe your family, on your job, whatever it is you're going through, you need the Lord to touch. He's able this morning. Amen. To do that, that you need. Great to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Uh, good to see some visitors with us. Uh, uh, we love y'all. Thank y'all for coming. See some first-time visitors. Amen. Uh, good to see some friends we've met. Amen. And uh, I like meeting people, and it feels like you always knew them. Amen. And uh, good to have everyone. Good to have our family here. And uh, good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Let's let them make ready to sing and one more special for us this morning. And let's get our minds on the Lord. He's truly been good to us. That choir did some good singing, and I just wanted to say this morning, uh, just building up in me, and I got to say it, I'm glad I'm saved, and I'm glad that in while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Hey. Hey. I'm just thankful for the blood this morning, I don't deserve it, and I'm just really grateful for him and what he's done in my life. Try to sing this for y'all, but I don't. You know, this world can tell you whatever they want to. They can tell you whatever they want to in all these schools and these universities and online. But I'm telling you one thing, folks. You cannot make it to heaven no other way. You cannot be saved no other way besides going through the blood of Christ. Do you understand me? That's the only way. And it still takes the blood of Jesus that brings victory to us Christians. It saves our souls. You must be born again. Yeah.
thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Second Kings this morning. We'll go into the Old Testament. Second Kings chapter 6. Look into the word of God this morning. Amen. How many of us is ready for the word this morning? I mean, I love good singing. I tell you, it didn't get no better than that choir. And I like that special singing there. Amen. I'm glad that we can hear the songs of Zion. I'm glad we can fellowship one with another. But I'm so thankful for his word. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will always stand. Amen. And we're thankful for it. Amen. 2 Kings, back in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 6. And I want to read a few verses. Uh, I know we don't normally read a lot of verses, but I feel, I feel like we need to read all these verses. We'll begin in verse number 8, 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse number 8. The Bible says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. Amen. And we know Israel's God's chosen people. They're the apple of his eye, Brother Jim. And I tell you, if you're living for God, there's some, going to be an enemy that's going to come and war against you. Amen. And it says that, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall, my, shall be my camp. And the men of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there. Listen, not once nor twice. Hey, we don't know how many times God has already saved us from dangers before. Amen. I can say this morning it's not been once and it's not been twice. Amen. It's been a bunch of times God has saved us. Hey, look, when you were late for work, God might have been saving you from something. Amen. He's a, he's a saving God. Verse 11. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He thinks there's a spy in his camp. Verse 12 says, And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha and the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed about the city. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, the host compassed about the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Amen. Here Elijah is. He, he, he's, he, him and his servant is in the house. And, and it goes out before daybreak. And there's, there's chariots and horses all surrounding the, their house. And he, getting, he gets nervous, amen, because he sees the enemy is great. And he's there. And he says these words, how shall we do? In verse 16, and he answered, fear not, for that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses uh, and chariots of fire around about Elisha. And when they came down unto him, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, smite uh, this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And according uh, to the word of Elisha, and Elisha said unto them, uh, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he will lead you. Uh, and he led them into Samaria. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elijah said, Open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw. And behold, there were, they were in the midst of 
Samaria. Do you, do you understand what's going on here? Uh, Elijah prayed, and these men that were against him, he said, blind them. And they were blinded. God blinded them. And he said, come here, follow me. I'll tell you who you're looking for. Where well, they were looking for him. And, and he took them out, and he took them into the city of Samaria, which were where the Israelites were. And when he said, open their eyes, these, this enemy opened their eyes, and they were surrounded, and there were nothing they could do. They knew they were going to die. Look at what it says. Verse 21, and the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when we saw them, my father said, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Hey, the king was ready to kill them. That was the enemy that was against them, and he was ready to kill them right then. Look at verse 22, and he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with the sword and with a bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provisions for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went unto their master. So the bands of Syria came no more unto the land of Israel. Amen. Hey, what a great story in the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your Word. We thank you for this passage. And I pray, Lord, that now you'll take it, let it come alive off the page, and go into our minds, into our hearts, and into our lives, God, and, and take it and do that with it that only you can do in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people would say, Amen. It's, a, it, it, it's, it's two weeks now into the first of the year, and I know how uh, a New Year's resolutions go. A amen. And I want us to look right here back in verse number 15, right there at the last of that, he made a statement, and he says, how shall we do? Amen. How shall we do? And you know what? When we make those resolu uh, 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 resolutions at the first of the year, we in our minds we're thinking, wonder how we're going to do. Amen. Me and the wife said we were going to start eating better at the first year. Now we're two weeks into it, and I can tell you we ain't doing good. We done been to Ned's, we done been to the Chinese place, and last night about 9.30, she come in there in the bedroom with two bowls of uh, homemade soup. We, if we was going, we, we definitely eating good, but I don't know if we're eating any better. Amen. Hey, and, and, and so it's two weeks in, and, and and how you doing on your New Year's resolution? If you made one, uh, huh? Hey, how, how are you doing on it? You know, we think about when we do a job interview. Uh, we, we wonder how we're going to do on that interview. It makes us nervous. And then after the interview, we wonder uh, how shall we do? I mean, I wonder how I did on that interview. Hey, you can go into something a little bit more serious if you want to. And when we face big surgeries in our life, the thing about surgery is the unknown. Hey, because the doctor says most people do good. But we are facing this surgery now, and we wonder how we're going to do in this surgery. How is my body going to react to such a major surgery? How shall we do is what our question is. Hey, and now I want to say this. Get real serious, and in the thing called life that God's blessed us with, hey, how shall we do in this thing called life? Hey, there's only one life, and it will soon pass, and only what's done for Christ will last. How shall we do in this thing called life? I want us to take this, this account in the Word of God and, and bring out a few things that will help us to know how shall we do in this life? How shall we do? How shall we do? Well, the first thing I want us to notice is right there in verse number 8 where we started reading. It says the king of Syria warred against Israel. Amen. And it goes on down and says in verse number 13, and they wanted to fetch him. Amen. They wanted to get that man of God. They wanted to, they wanted to take over Israel. They wanted to capture Israel. And today when I, when I was reading this this week and trying to study, I wanted to know something. How shall we do in life? We'll do good if we know that the enemy wants us. The enemy wants us. Amen. Listen to me. The enemy wants us. It says, let me go fetch him. And they warred against him. And I'm going to tell us something. If you'll read the Bible ever since the garden, you can see that the enemy was warring against the child of God. Amen. Hey, the enemy wants us. Is what? Hey, look, if we living in a the world, they say, you ain't got no enemy. I want to tell us, Brother Hunter, it's still the blood and there's still a devil. Amen. His name is Satan and he wants you this morning. He 
wants you. Hey, the enemy wants you. It was started in the garden. You go all the way to the revelation, and you can see there's warring against that man called Satan. He's against us. He wants us. Hey, can I say he wants our children? You don't think Satan wants children? Ask Moses' his mama when he was born. Huh? Ask Jesus Christ his mama when he was born. Huh? Hey, he wants our children. Satan wants our children. He wants our ladies. Hey, ladies. Hey, he wants our ladies. You can go into the Word of God and you can see there in the, in the garden, Eve. Hey, she was tempted by Satan because he was subtle is what the Bible says. He was cunning. He was crafty. He was slick is how, she, how he got in there. He wanted uh, our, our ladies, hey, he wanted them. It says there in 1 Timothy 5 and 15, talking about ladies now. Hey, you don't think Satan wants you there? It says, uh, be careful, be careful, ladies. He said, because some of them's already, some ladies is what this is talking about, has already turned aside after Satan. Talking about ladies. Hey, read it in context. Hey, if I had time, I would. He wants us men. Uh, he wants us men in the Bible all the way through it. You can see, you can ask David there when he would number Israel. You know what it says happened? You know why he numbered Israel? Because the Bible says Satan provoked him to do it. All the way back in the Old Testament, Satan was a fighting. He wants our men. Hey, Paul says, hey, hey, Paul says, I wanted to come unto you, but Satan hath hindered me. Uh, Satan wants the men of this world. He wants them. He, he, he told uh, uh, Peter, Peter, here's what he said. Here's what, here's what Jesus would say unto Peter. He would say, Simon, Simon. Satan has desired to have you. Satan wants you. Hey, the enemy wants you is what he would say. He said, but I pray for you. Amen. I'm glad the Lord's praying for us this morning. Hey, the, the, I want us to know how shall we do in life. We'll do good if we know that the enemy wants us. If we know that the enemy wants us, how do we get, how do we, how do we fight this enemy? Well, it's okay. Hey, Jesus himself was tempted by Satan, by the way. If you think you're above that you, Satan can't come and tempt you, he tempted Jesus not at the beginning of his ministry only, but all the way through his ministry. He would fight him when he would go into the garden and pray his last time Satan was there. The enemy wants us. How do we, how do we fight off the enemy? Uh, here's what the Bible would say. The Bible would say, neither give place to the devil. Amen. Hey, don't give him a place in your life. Neither give place to the devil. How do, how do we resist? The Bible says, submit yourselves, therefore the God resists the devil, and he'll flee from you, is what the Bible would say. The Bible would say, be sober and be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he... He wants you. The, the enemy wants you. A, a, amen. Hey, if you're lost in here, the Bible says in Ephesians 6 and verse number 11, put on the whole armor of God is what it would tell us in that chapter. And it says, why do you need an armor of God on? So you can fight against the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil, the tricks of the devil. Hey, put on the whole armor of God. Hey, look, if you're lost, here's the biggest wile of the devil. The wile of the devil, the biggest one is just wait a while. Just wait a while. Just wait a while. Hey, you don't have to give your life unto Christ. Hey, I, I know that young girl was singing about the blood of Christ, but you don't have to do that today. You've got tomorrow. You know what the most dangerous word in the Bible is? Tomorrow. Most dangerous word in the Bible. Boast not thyself for tomorrow, for no man knows what a day may bring. Hey, how shall we do? How shall we do? We'll do fine if we know the enemy wants us. huh? If we know that he is after us and he don't want us for good, he wants to destroy us. There's an enemy that's after us. What, that's what we see in this story. Amen. Am I in the word of this morning? Y'all help me out now. I want to stay right there in the word of God. There's an enemy that wants us, that's warring against us. Hey, that wants to come and just fetch you out of this thing called life. I'm glad, I'm glad to know that ain't all this story, amen. There's an enemy that wants them, but look in verse number 9, what the Bible says. It, it, it says in verse number 9, it says, And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware, 
Beware, don't go down there. You can't go to that place because that's where the enemy is. Beware, and it says in verse number 10, And the king of Israel sent unto the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, is what the Bible says. I'm glad that there, hey, to know that there is an enemy that wants us, but there's a man that'll warn us. Amen. I'm glad there's a man that'll warn us. Hey, it ain't about the preacher this morning, but thank God for preachers that tells us, warns us that there's an enemy out there and that wants to destroy us, and there's a God in heaven who loves us. I'm glad for a man that warns us. Amen. I tell you what, what we got today in our churches, I'm not calling out any kind of particular church, but it's feel good. Scratch your back, tinkle on the cymbal a little bit, tell you everything's going to be all right and send you on home. And I tell you what, and Satan's right on your back destroying you. I'm glad there's a man who will warn us. Huh? Hey, he says, don't go to that place. I could elaborate this morning if you'd like. I'll tell you, there's some places you go to, the enemy's going to be right there. Huh? I don't want to say bars or brothels or any place like that. Hey, hey, let the Lord speak to you. I don't want to tell you to go to places that are the enemy. Does. Hey, let the Lord speak to you. I just want to warn you, there's places you can't go to because the enemy wants us. It says in verse 10 there, he, he warned them not once. Not twice. I, I wrote in my Bible right under there, I wrote that word bunch. Huh? I don't know about you, how you was raised, if you saved this morning, I don't know how you was raised in church, church but my preacher always was warning us. He was warning us that the enemy was going to come in and try to destroy us. Hey, he would warn us that there's an enemy out there that was against us. He would warn us, and he wouldn't do it just on Sunday mornings. He'd do it about every Sunday morning. And I thank God today I can still remember some of the messages he would preach and cry and weep and tell me, hey, don't do this, it'll hurt you. Hey, be strong in the Lord, be courageous in the Lord. He would warn us about things, and he would do it over and over and over again, not once, not twice, but always he would do it. Someone says, well, I can't remember what you preached last week. You can't remember what you eat last week either. But you know that it was good for you. You know you needed it for nourishment. Huh? Hey, I'm glad for a man of God that will warn us. Amen. I'm glad when we get a guest preacher come up here and stand in the pulpit and I get to sit on the third row and listen that he'll throw out some warnings. Amen. That we have an enemy that wants us. I'm glad there's a man who warns us. Some people tell me, preacher, you don't have to preach like that. Well, who are you preaching to, preacher? Well, what are you doing, preacher? You, don't, you know what? If you'd calm down just a little bit and not talk about sin so much, we would have to build a bigger sanctuary. I, oh, I have been told that if you just calm down a little bit, preacher. But I want you to know that the Bible tells me in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17, that if I don't warn people that their blood will be required at my hand. Huh? Hey, that's what the Bible says now, not making it up. Peter warned them, look in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. He would warn people. Paul warned people. Acts chapter 20, hey, verse number 29 through, through 31. Let me read that one to us. Paul would warn them in these, in these scriptures. It says, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also for your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn you uh, every night and day with tears. Huh? I'm glad for a man of God who warns us. Hey, he, we read it right there in the scripture. He warns us. Hey, here's what the Bible says in Romans uh, 10 and 14. The Bible says, how could they, they, how could they know? How can they hear without a preacher? I'm glad for a man of God who warns us. Hey, there's the enemy that wants us, and I'm glad that there's a man who warns us, church, who warns us in this story. It, it went all the way back in the Old Testament. He would warn them not to go here, 
not to go there. The enemy was there. Look at verse 21 in our scripture. Look at what it says. It says, and the king, the, the, uh, uh, Elisha had led all that enemy, all those horses and chariots. He led them right. He blinded their eyes. It says, and, and they, they, they led into the city, and all of them been in the city. Now all these horses and chariots, this whole, whole army is in the city. And now, uh, he says, open their eyes, and now they can see. And they're in the enemy territory. They're in the, where the children of Israel, and now they're the ones in danger. And the king would say, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Hey, it's through the Bible. You know what? Us men sometimes, uh, especially us men, ladies do it too. But we see someone who, who's fallen away. Hey, someone who's, who's not been attending church. And the first thing we want to do is smite them. First thing we want to do is smite. Hey, shall we smite them? Shall we smite them? And look at what it says. He said, no, you shouldn't smite them. He said, fix them something to eat. Give them something to eat. And, 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 and help them right there. John in the New Testament, the one who would write 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, hey, the book's about the love of God. You know, when he started in the ministry, he said, he said, look, what should we do? We should, should we call fire down like Elijah did and consume them? Jonah sure didn't want to go to Nineveh. But we see here that how we're doing in life, we would do good to know that there's an enemy that wants us. Thank God for a man that'll warn us. And we see right here in this, in these verses, that there's a love that wins them. There's a love that wins them. Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Brother Hunter, I don't know about you, but sometimes I want to call fire down on some people. But that ain't what God did to me. I remember, hey church, I want, I want to say something. I remember one time when I was on the side of the enemy. I'm telling you, I remember a time when I was lost. You know what I was? I was blinded and I could not see. But I'm so glad that there was a man of God who would lead me into a place. Amen. He would lead me to a place. And they, some people probably looked at me and said, God, you ought to bring fire down from them. Hey, but it didn't. The love of God was showed to me. And I'm telling you, and I read the scripture now. And he says, I prepare us a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I'm so glad that when I was on the opposite side and then I was brought into a place where God's people was hey, and when they could have shunned me and could have sent me away they told me about the love of God. And they fed me when I was hungry. Huh? They gave me drink when I was thirsty. And they told me about the love of God. It's already been said this morning. It's already been quoted. I want to put it on the board though. I want us to see it. I want to see the word of God. I want, to, I want to put up Romans 5 and verse number 8 right on the board. Here's what the Bible would say. Huh? Talking about when you was an enemy, remember? Uh, if, you, if you're lost, you're an enemy of God, by the way. God loves you, but you're an enemy. Here's what he says. But God commendeth his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Look up the word sinner. It means enemy. That's what it means. Huh? Huh? Can I read it like that? God commendeth, he displayed, he showed his love, he put it on display on Calvary. God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. Huh? We were an enemy of God. And Christ died. He showed us his love. Hey, don't forget, hey, don't forget the most popular verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Don't you remember when you were an enemy of God? Huh? Hey, he set you down to give you something to eat. Huh? He set you down to give you something to drink. Hey, look here. And then he sent us on our way. Amen. And the way was a new way. Amen. We was going to our master. Jesus Christ. Romans, Romans 2 and verse 4. We'll, we'll end with this verse today. Y'all can come get us a, another song. Romans 2 and verse number 4. The Bible clearly says this. The Bible's clear that the enemy wants us. Thank God for a man that'll warn us. Thank God for a love that wins us. 
Bible says, right there in the last of these things, this verse, that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It was the love of God that led us to repentance. How could you not look at the cross of Calvary and see the greatest love ever? Greater love hath no man than a man lay down his life for his friend. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repent. Do you know, friend, if you're in here lost this morning and you don't know him as your personal Savior, he loves you. Why don't you embrace his goodness this morning? Why don't you give your life unto him this morning? It's a great day to be saved as we all stand all over the house of the Lord this morning. You need to come. God loves you. He died for you, friend. I know that I'm not worthy. No matter what you've been through. To call upon your name. And all my life I've been a sinner. I was an enemy of God. And for that I am. God would save us if we'll call on him this morning. But I heard that you would listen. And now I'm sending you my place. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down? you this morning, but God loves you this morning. I think I've just hit bottom, and now I'm looking up to see. Thank you, Jesus. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down? Yes, I must the altars are open ready. this morning here in the house of the Lord. From all the seeds that I have sown. Do you know you're saved this morning? And knowing, Lord, is there no doubt in your mind? If there's a doubt in your mind, you can come and get it settled this morning. We it's have a no so salvation. So it's not a hope so or I think so. It's a no so this morning. Come down to me. He'll meet you right where you are if you'll come this morning. I know that there are others who can offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand. If for me you had no time, I think I've just hit bottom, and now I'm looking up to see. Come.
Father, we thank you this morning for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you, Lord, when, Lord, you.